dear students today we are going to discuss about the layers of eyeball so eyeball it is having basically three layers what are the three layers outer fibrous layer middle vascular layer and inner nervous layer three layers outermost layer that one is a fibrous layer it is made up of fibers so outer fibrous layer in the middle layer it is made up of blood vessels so middle vascular layer and the innermost layer that is made up of nerve fibers known as the nervous layer eyeball is having this eyeball it is having three layers okay so this is what the eyeball with the some muscles okay so this eyeball is having three layers so in order to see the layers we are taking the longitudinal section of this eyeball okay see this outermost layer now the tip of the cursor is on that outermost layer it is a fibrous layer okay the middle layer it is made up of blood vessels see this part it is a middle vascular layer then outermost layer sorry innermost layer it is made up of nerve fibers inner nervous layer so what are the layers outer fibrous layer middle vascular layer then inner nervous layer this outer fibrous layer it is having two parts sclera and cornea what are they see this posterior part see from here we'll start from here from here to that particular region okay this is what the sclera then this anterior part this most convex part see this is what the cornea so outer fibrous layer it is having two parts sclera and cornea okay so first part it is clear outer fibrous layer is having two parts sclera and cornea see the diagram once again see this is this whole thing this is what the fibrous layer the outermost layer it is having this posterior part known as the sclera and this anterior most convex part that is the cornea like that the vascular layer it is having three parts see this posterior part so here we can see a thin red line here it is what the posterior part which is known as choroid so choroid posterior choroid then anteriorly here we can see almost a triangular shaped part this is what the ciliary body okay so choroid continues with the ciliary body ciliary body anteriorly continues with the iris okay so these are the three parts of the vascular layer iris ciliary body choroid then innermost and nervous layer that is also having three parts so vascular layer is clear it is otherwise known as uvl tract see middle vascular layer it is having one one more name it is known as what the uvl tract it is having three parts choroid ciliary body and the iris okay then the innermost layer that is the nervous layer or the retina so we'll see the features of outer fibrous layer okay i told the outer fibrous layer it is having two parts sclera and cornea first we will see the features of sclera see sclera which forms a posterior five sixths of the eyeball we'll check it see this is a eyeball see this dark colored part here comes the cornea and this white colored part the weight of the eye that is what the sclera so correct now it forms a posterior part of the eye and the posterior five sixths of the eyeball anterior one to anterior one sixth that is formed by the cornea so posterior five six it is made up of sclera and it is made up of dense fibrous tissue so dense fibrous tissue what is mean by that it is made up of fibrous tissue and quite strong dense the fibers are compactly packed or closely packed <coughs> so it is known as dense fibrous tissue and its posterior part is thick and the anterior part is thick see this part its posterior part is the thickest part but the thing is this posterior part it is pierced by the rootlets of optic nerve or optic nerve fibers okay this posterior part is pierced by the nerve fibers optic nerve fibers as a result this posterior the same part it is the weakest part so the thickest part of the sclera what is the where it is seen see this posterior part that is the thickest part of the sclera the same thickest part it is the weakest part it is pierced by the 
optic nerve fibers so say that so it is thick behind means the posterior part is thick okay and that posterior part it is pierced by the optic nerve fibers that area that particular part of this posterior part it is known as what lamina cribrosa okay see see the point posterior part is the thickest part that thickest part or that posterior part is pierced by optic nerve fibers so as a result it looks like a sieve okay cribrosa means cribriform means a sieve like okay so it looks like a sieve the see this is what the lamina cribrosa okay so the, that posterior part is pierced by the optic nerve fibers then its anterior part is the thinnest part where six millimeter behind the limbus what is meant by limbus see this sclera here it joins with the cornea this junction the junction between the sclera and the cornea this is the sclera so here also we can see this um, sclera so sorry limbus okay this is what the limbus or the sclero corneal junction so here also we can see the, the limbus sclero corneal junction okay so anyway this is what the sclero corneal junction so our thinnest part which is seen six millimeter behind the limbus so this is what the limbus or sclero corneal junction six millimeter behind means approximately here this area this is the thinnest part it is not clear in this diagram so approximately here comes the thinnest part of the sclera so two points posterior part is the thickest part that is pierced by the optic nerve fibers that particular region is known as lamina cribrosa then anterior part is the thinnest part exactly where six millimeter behind the limbus or sclerocorneal junction okay then outer surface and the inner surface so anterior and posterior these two points are clear now we are going to see the outer surface and the inner surface outer surface which is white colored no doubt it is one of the white of the eye okay but the inner surface is not white see outer surface of the sclera it is white and smooth okay the inner surface which is brown and it grooved by ciliary nerves and vessels see the next layer which is made up of blood vessels those blood vessels makes grooves there in the inner surface so inner surface is brown colored and grooved by ciliary nerves as well as the vessels outer surface nothing more about the outer surface it is white colored and smooth okay and its anterior part is covered with the conjunctiva that we know okay then deep to the limbus there we can see one vein or one canal canal of slump where it is see i told you this is what the sclera but this one is a cornea see this junction this is what the sclero cornea junction there we can see a draining channel okay the draining channel see here we can see the aqueous humor okay that aqueous humor is drained by this canal of slump okay that canal it is known as the canal of slump so those are the some of the important points of this sclera okay then sclera it is pierced by optic narrow ciliary nerves and arteries then anterior ciliary artery then four vena verticosa now cornea we are moving to the cornea cornea it is a transparent and a vascular okay then how it gets nutrition a vascular means blood vessels are absent in that tissue okay then how it gets nutrition it gets nutrition from the lymph fluid which is circulating the cornea okay so some features of cornea it is transparent then it is a vascular see this of because of this a vascular nature and well, okay we'll discuss that point later okay so it is transparent then it is a vascular and it is nourished by lymph vessel lymph fluid okay then it is having outermost corneal epithelium then anterior elastic lamina then substantia propria then posterior elastic lamina then single squamous mesothelium how see this is outermost part of the cornea okay see this outermost part which is covered with the epithelium this is what the stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium so outermost corneal epithelium and second layer anterior elastic lamina see this area this is what the anterior elastic lamina then comes this area to so this fibers under this cells that is what the substantia propria and then after that we are having another clear layer this area that is what the posterior 
इलास्टिक लैमिनर देन कम्स अनदर लेयर दैट इज व्हाट द मेसोथेलियम ओके सो दीस आर द लेयर्स ऑफ कॉर्निया प्रति कॉर्नियल एपिथेलियम व्हाट टाइप ऑफ एपिथेलियम इज देयर दैट इज अ स्ट्रैटिफाइड स्क्वामस नॉन ग्रैनुलर एपिथेलियम देन एंटीरियर इलास्टिक लैमिना देन सबस्टैंशिया प्रोपरिया देन पोस्टीरियर इलास्टिक लैमिना एंड द सिंपल स्क्वामस और मेसोथेलियम how the cells are arranged or how these layers are arranged see from anterior to posterior see here we can see the epithelium then anterior elastic lamina then substantia propria and posterior elastic lamina then innermost layer there we are having the mesothelium okay so these are the some of the important points of this cornea so what are they it is transparent a vascular the layers so sclera and the cornea these two points are clear now we are going to discuss about the next layer middle layer or the uveal tract okay the uveal tract is a pimar question uveal tract i told you it is having three parts choroid ciliary body and iris see choroid is a thin pigmented layer seen between the sclera and the core sclera and the retina see this is what the sclera and this one is a optic part of the retina or this is what the retina so between these two there we can see a thin layer See this red color. See this thin part of the uveal tract, or this thin part of the vascular layer, or middle layer. It is one of the choroid. So first point is clear. Choroid. It's a thin pigmented layer seen between the sclera and the retina. Then anteriorly, it continues with the ciliary body. Anteriorly, this layer, choroid, it is continuous with the ciliary body at ora serrata. Ora serrata. I will tell you later what is meant by the ora serrata. Okay, see anteriorly it is continuous with this almost triangular shaped structure this is what the ciliary body so anteriorly it is continuous with the ciliary body at what level see here this posterior part of the retina it is known as the optic part optic part continues with the ciliary part see here it is it will become wavy that wavy part of the retina it is known as what ora serrata okay see at the level of the ora serrata that level it continues with the this ciliary body clear so core what is meant by core and core it's the thin layer of the middle layer seen between the sclera and retina then anteriorly it continues with the ciliary body those two points clear that's all now we are going to see the details of the ciliary body ciliary body it is the thickest part correct not is the thickest part of the see choroid ciliary body iris this is what the iris see this is the thickest part of the uveal tract or this is the thickest part of this second layer so ciliary body it is the thickest part it continues anteriorly with the iris and posteriorly with the choroid we'll check it see posteriorly no doubt it is continuous with the choroid then anteriorly what is the weight see anteriorly it is continuous with the iris correct then anteriorly it is continuous with the iris then ciliary body which is triangular in cross section already told you it is almost a triangular in cross section then In the sclerous surface, it is having some muscles are known as the ciliary muscles. Where, see inside. Actually, it is seen inside the ciliary body. Inside the ciliary body, towards the sclerous surface or towards this area. See here. Now the tip of the cursor. See in that area there we can see some muscles. It is not there in that diagram. In this area, it is having some muscles. Or inside the ciliary body, some muscles are there. That those muscles are known as the ciliary muscles. Then here, in the lower part. Anterior part of the vitreal surface is having some processes are known as ciliary processes. What is meant by that? See here, this is the vitreous humor. Humor. So here, the vitreal surface it is related to this. This surface is related to the vitreal humor. So vitreal surface is having some processes. See this process, one process, second process. Okay, these processes are known as ciliary processes. Okay, so it is triangular in. cross section posteriorly continues with the choroid anteriorly continues with the ciliary sorry iris then um, sclerous surface or inside this ciliary body we can see some muscle fibers are known as ciliary muscles then inner surface is having some projections are known as ciliary processes now we are moving to the iris iris is an anterior part of the uveal tract no doubt and it's almost a, rounded cut or a circular cut with a central opening the central opening is known as the pupil we'll check it see this is what the diagram of the iris so this circular structure with a central hole this one is actual anterior view actually this is what the anterior view or front view of the iris in the diagram we are seeing see in this 
diagram we are seeing this section of the iris see upper part lower part and this is what the hole okay anyway this is what the anterior view of the iris so it's a rounded cut and shaped structure with a central hole this central hole it is known as what the pupil okay it is placed vertically between the cornea and the lens is it correct we'll check it it is placed vertically correct between the lens and the cornea so it is seen between the lens this structure this is what the lens so it is seen between the lens and the cornea now it divides the anterior segment into anterior and posterior chambers see what is meant by this anterior segment and posterior segment area which is seen anterior to the lens see this area or this area which is seen between the lens and the cornea it is known as anterior segment which is divided into anterior chamber and posterior chamber okay this is what the posterior segment and this one is the anterior segment which is seen anterior to the lens posterior to this is a posterior segment now this anterior segment it is divided into two parts anterior part and our anterior chamber and posterior chamber by this iris okay now this iris it is having two arterial circle major arterial circle and minor arterial circle see here this iris towards the periphery there we can see one major arterial circle some arteries joins there to form a circle this arterial circle seen towards the periphery of the iris it is known as see here in this image this this area this is what the iris and this is what the pupil okay so towards the periphery there we can see one arterial circle that one is a major arterial circle like that towards the center of this iris there we can see another arterial circle that one is a minor arterial circle so minor arterial circle and major arterial circle those two points are clear now inside the iris there also we can see some muscles some longitudinal muscles and some circular muscles the longitudinal muscles are known as what dilator pupillae and circular muscles are known as cincture pupillae how see longitudinal muscles known as like this those longitudinal muscles when this muscle contract it, it dilates the pupil okay so that longitudinal muscles are known as what dilator pupillae some circular muscles are also seen when that circular muscles contract it leads to the construction of the pupil so that's why it's known as constrictor pupillae or cincture pupillae okay so two types of muscles circular muscles cincture pupillae and longitudinal muscles dilator pupillae so those are the some of the features of this iris okay now we are moving to the innermost layer that one is the retina retina it is having three parts what are the optic part ciliary part and iridial part see this area which is sensitive to light that area it is known as the optic part then here this retina continues as a double layered cell cell layer that area that extension which is seen here in this iris it is known as iridial part and here that retina continues here also deep to the deep to the iris and see here it is a ciliary body deep to the ciliary body it is known as ciliary part then deep to the iris there also we can see the extension of the retina that one is a iridial part so it is having three parts optic part ciliary part and iridial part see it once again this posterior part of the retina which is sensitive to light it is known as optic part then deep to this ciliary body there we can see it is not there in this diagram okay there also we can see the extension of the retina as a double layered cell okay so here we can see a double layered cell layer it is known as ciliary part then deep to the iris here also we can see the continuation of the retina that one is a radial part so optic part ciliary part and then iridial part now we have to discuss about the optic disc what is meant by optic disc see opposite to the entry of the optic nerve see here inside the retina there we can see one depression okay opposite to the optic nerve here inside the retina there we can see one depression that depression one rounded depression is one of the optic disc see here that this is what the anterior view of the retina 
so here this rounded area this area it is known as a optic disc the center of the optic disc, disc where we can't see the rods and cones or rods and cones are absent there it is known as the physiological blind spot okay then towards the posterior pole or little bit laterally there we can see another depression it is known as a macula lutea okay see see this rounded depression which is one the optic disc it's a central pole this is a physiological blind spot towards the posterior pole there are towards laterally there we can see another depression it is what the macula lutea it's central part that is what the fovea centralis the remaining details that you have to read just a minute so macula lutea and fovea centralis the details of macula lutea and fovea centralis that you have to read so anyway this is a depression which is seen opposite to the optic nerve see compare these two diagrams see this is optic nerve opposite to the entry of the optic nerve here we can see a depression that one is a optic disc optic disc towards the center of the optic disc that is a that area it is the physiological blind spot then laterally towards the oh, yes, here we can see another one that one is a macula lutea its central part it is known as what the fovea centralis now we have to discuss about the layers of this retina what are the layers of retina retina it is having 10 layers what are the outer pigmented layer then layer of rods and cones then external limiting membrane then outer nuclear layer then outer plexiform layer inner nuclear layer inner plexiform layer ganglion cell layer nerve fiber layer then in the inner limiting layer see this one is a retina See here we can see some cells. These are the outer pigmented cells. Outer pigmented cells. Then here we can see the rods and cones. So a layer of rods and cones. So outer pigmented layer, then layer of rods and cones. Now here it is not there in the diagram. Here these layers are or these rods and cones are connected by a connective tissue. That is what the external elastic. Oh, sorry, external limiting membrane. External limiting membrane. After the external limiting membrane, see if we are going here, there we can see the nucleus. Okay, that's why it's known as outer nuclear layer. So outer nuclear layer. Now, see here we can see plexus of nerves. So this is what the outer plexiform layer. And if you are going again inside there we can see the inner nuclear layer see here we can see the nucleus again another layer of nucleus so inner nuclear layer see then if we are going inner see again plexus of nerves so inner plexiform layer then again nucleus see this nucleus is a ganglion cell layer then narrow fibers arise from this ganglion cell layer so this area it is known as narrow fiber layer and inner limiting layer so what are the layers outer pigmented layer then layer of rods and cones then outer limiting layer then outer nuclear layer outer plexiform layer inner nuclear layer inner plexiform layer ganglion cell layer narrow fiber layer inner limiting layer so these are the layers of retina so it may be a five mark question layers of retina so these are the some of the details of these three layers so i told you eyeball it is having three layers this time this eyeball it is having three layers what are the layers outer fibrous layer with the two parts layer and cornea details of those two layer then middle vascular layer with three parts choroid ciliary body iris okay this middle vascular layer is otherwise known as the uvl tract then inner nervous layer with the three parts optic part ciliary part radial part okay the remaining details like a lens structure of lens and uh, a and a bit as well you that you have to create okay